Hey guys, welcome to a new video. This one is going to be a little bit different, I'm going to keep it experimental for this video. Uh, in this video, what I'll do is basically do an audio commentary on a stream that I did on Thursday of a lot of different simple sprites. And the goal here is to be able to talk about them more specifically while the footage is running at four times speed. Basically, these are little woodland creatures that are going to be in Arrowbound. So, uh, the next one I wanted to do was a fox. I'm just playing with shapes at the moment, don't really have a reference, just trying to find something that I like. It's just as a point of, I don't know, pride or something. Very quickly though, I do go into the references, check out some pictures of foxes, and I'm trying to find one here that matches the pose. So, first it's color. I'm just trying to block in some shapes. Now remember, with that whole process, the silhouette is important, um, but it's one step. The shapes come next. So, for example, I would say a really distinctive element of the fox is its tail. But I wanted to keep all of these sprites very compressed because of how they're going to be used in the game. So I didn't want the tail to be sticking out. Um, which means I'm going to have to find a way to make it distinct using something else other than the silhouette. It's going to have to be color, and contrast, that kind of thing. Uh, keeping the eyes the same as the rabbit, I want those um, details to be consistent across the animals so that you can tell they're from the same game, nice and cohesive. This is me blocking out that tail and trying to create contrast to make it look like it's wrapping around just with that second color. What else have we got here? We've got some shading underneath the face just to make it again more distinct, right? To give it that chin. So we had the, the tail, previously all of it was this color. Most of the body was this lighter color here and the tail looks like a white element that's sitting in between this space of color that's all that same lighter orange with some darker color on top. You could probably work out that it was sort of extending out and around because you know it's a fox but to go one step further and block out that color here so that the only light color is coming out of this space and even going as far as darkening this, then leads your eye around like this. It makes it a little stronger and clearer that this is a tail. Trying a couple of things. I really liked what this looked like. I, I liked the way that the nose made more of a snout if I pushed it to the right. Uh, as you can see, when I come to the outline here, uh, it kind of gets eaten away by the outline. So we had to do a little bit of tinkering around uh, to get that right. But I think in the end, uh, I think it looks quite good. Nice. Doing a little bit of um, internal outlines to reinforce some of these shapes. So this crease here between the leg and the body, uh, because they're similar lighting conditions and they just happen to be using similar colors, taking some of that outline and introducing it in is a, uh, a nice technique to be able to yeah, keep things nice and, um, nice and clear. Here I am again playing with details just to see what happens. Sometimes it's nice to experiment. And I managed to reintroduce that snout anyway with the uh, orange on the white there. So, uh, that's the fox. Next, we wanted to work on a badger. This is a much simpler animal. <laughs> it's just sort of like a big blob with legs, small tail and a, and a fun little stripy face. Uh, so this one took almost no time. Even the poses, because it's quadrupedal, it doesn't really have that many interesting poses you can do with it. Uh, I just wanted to sort of, yeah, get a roll on with these. Getting that face, the streak on the side there. Brightening it up so that we can see the eyes. Even though the animal itself is quite dark and in real life the fur and the eyes are almost the same color, it's nice to create some more contrast so that we can actually see the eyes uh, regardless. I think sometimes we have this idea in um, game design called like the rule of cool. There's like a similar rule, I guess, with pixel art where you could call like the rule of readability, right? If something is more readable, if it's easy to understand what it is because you did some change, then it's probably worth doing that. Even if it's not quite as realistic, um, especially because, you know, you, you're making an abstraction anyway, right? It's pixel art. It's not, it's not a realistic drawing. So here's another good example of that rule and effect. You can see the highlights on the feet here. Um, they're not really that realistic. You could make arguments for, you know, reflections or, you know, global illumination or whatever, you know, making the feet brighter or as bright as the body here. 
but if I'm sticking to that top lighting rule that I usually stick to, uh, then these would probably be about as dark as you know this uh, arm here. Now, what we could have done was darken this space here and then keep this the same color as that, so that there's like a bit of like a wrist that's darker. But I think overall, keeping the feet a little bit lighter helps reduce the complexity and um, makes them stand out a little bit more. So again, it's not totally realistic, but it helps the sprite become more a little a little more readable. So these are all woodland creatures. They are none of them are birds. They're all designed to be creatures that you would find yeah in the woods. They're terrestrial. Uh, so here we've got a frog. This one's a probably the sprite that I think is the most video gamey. Um, anatomically incorrect, I guess would be another way of putting that. Uh, I really liked isolating these elements of the crease in that leg, the, the crouched sort of back legs that all frogs seem to have. I think that's what makes this one really sell uh, the image of looking like a frog. And then there's this Super Mario Brothers 3 aspect of this mouth. I don't know if you've played that game, but if you have, these characters look a lot like uh, characters later in the game in, in, in SMB3 that um, they're like they hold these spiky balls and they throw them at you. Uh, I don't know why I'm reminded of them here, but something about the way that mouth is shaped. I just, it, I like it, so I kept it. I didn't mention this on stream, but I, I really liked it. So playing with the shapes a little bit more. I think this one reads quite well on its own, but I thought I'd give it a bit of a highlight just to add some complexity and um, keep it in line with the others, which all have highlights. Nice outline. Frogs are, frogs are simple. I've got Hedgehogs in Insignia, my, my much longer title that I'm working on. So part of this was a little bit of seeing if I could work some of the same logic in, but I also wanted to try reconcepting my perceptions of what a hedgehog can look like. So I tried to get this one, uh, the ears were a big feature for me. I wanted to see if I could get those nice round ears in there. And um, yeah, just playing with shapes again, get those spikes in there, of course. Hedgehog's legs are so stumpy that you can't really see them. A lot of the animals here have quite stumpy legs. But I think that really helps uh, sell them as being a little more helpless or, you know, vulnerable. The big faces, it's kind of a nice overlap with how pixel art just requires you to do a little bit more um, chibi kind of like caricature. But in this case, these animals are designed to be more helpless, so uh, it's kind of like a double win in that regard. So pretty simple hedgehog, trying to do some more um, high contrast work around the spines to make them stand out. Then we went for a squirrel. Squirrel's tail is so stand out that I really wanted to keep this one uh, you know, as a big part of the sprite. You can see I, I oversized it at the beginning and then made sure I worked back and tried to make it uh, a more appropriate size. Cause I didn't want it to be bigger than the fox or anything like that. But it's not such a bad idea to just get the shape right and then resize it down uh, as I have done in previous videos. So starting with the silhouette, getting the colors in, this one came up so quickly. So there's not too much that you have to do with markings on the squirrel to sort of make it differentiated. Uh, there are different kinds of squirrels. Some of them have curlier tails and some of them have different markings, but uh, a red squirrel like this, you can just get away with, with making it nice and red. More highlights on the feet, as you can see. And um, I did, this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier, having that sort of ankle sort of cuff. We could darken this and keep this the same color as that. And that's what I've done here on the squirrel. So here you can see, in this instance, I lit up the foot and here I darkened underneath the foot. There's two reasons for this. One of them is to create a little bit of sense of depth and perspective. So this foot is closer to us. So it's receiving more light than this one. And the other reason is because we've got the arm coming through here and the arm is in front of the foot. If I make this darker, I can actually draw a more clear outline. It just made sense here to not have three different colors in the same spot. You know, it doesn't really make sense for this color to be here because that's so many, that's two shades brighter than, than the color above it, which would make that leg really, really step forward um, and look like it's a lot closer to us. 
but it's so far away because the character's hunched over as well that it makes the most sense to make it a little bit smaller, so two pixels instead of three, and darker. Uh, because we've got that hunch, we've got that darker body underneath here. And here I'm just adding a second color just to make that a little more, uh, to add some, some something, you know, to differentiate the arms from the body. I must have decided that I just wanted it to be clearer. I think there was something about the pose that I wasn't happy with, um, specifically the way that the the way that squirrels tend to to hold things in their hands, like people, like the way they hold a nut. I think that was something that I wanted to capture, and so having the white underbelly made it a little clearer where the arms were. That's what the goal was. You can see that in that reference. So the next is a rat. Rats have this hunch that I quite like. It's sort of something from a little bit of like Ratatouille or uh, something like that. I could sort of see this one before I started working on it and it came together really quickly. You can see I'm already detailing the ears and again, making that distinction. A lot of these rodent animals are quite dexterous. So rats and squirrels are quite close evolutionarily and they tend to grab things with their hands which is adorable. So just playing with different colors with the tail. I want this to be a little more diverse color-wise because it's all so gray. So I'm trying to find ways to make interesting colors and to, uh, yeah, to make it a little more, give it a bit more character. That was pretty good. I then made it a little smaller because it's, it's a rat after all. It's smaller than most of these animals. Now the animals don't have to be perfect to scale even with each other, because they're not really going to be in the same place at the same time. For the most part, you're only going to be seeing one at a time throughout the game. Uh, so the size thing is sort of like a see what you can get away with rather than a, uh, they have to be perfect. But really happy with this. <laughs> Going for some dramatic lighting here. It's interesting. For the most part, I'm just using my instinct as I'm working on it. And sometimes I would make different choices when I'm, as I'm looking at it in post. I thought it was fine a few shades ago. You know, sometimes as I'm working, I'll just, if I'm thinking about something at the time or I'm sort of caught in a, in a specific thought, I will absentmindedly add detail or, you know, make iterations on things. It's never a bad thing as long as you're signing off mentally on what you're working on as you work on it. But here I thought, you know, what have we got? One, two, three, four, we look one two three four colors five if you count the outline it's probably a little unnecessary to have this much detail we probably could have kept this color here all the way to here and then used the second color or this color just um, have this basically be two colors on the body rather than four but eh, it still looks good I noticed as I was working on this that like I'm almost in sequence every next sprite is more detailed than the previous so we're doing a weasel next. And these guys are fun. I've never done a weasel before. Weasels obviously have a much longer body. And so again, I was using the curled tail to sort of give it that impression of, of having a longer body, even though I can't really express it with physical pixel length. I can't, you know, have it be 40 pixels long. Um, so yeah, just wrapping that tail in. This is interesting. You can see here I'm using like a darker couple of pixels here. The goal of this is to try to create the impression and I keep zooming out a lot. The reason why I'm zooming out here while I'm putting two pixels here is I'm, give, I'm trying to give the impression that there is another eye laying just around the corner from the face. So just beyond this pixel around sort of like 3D around the face is the next eye or even in this outline. Now you can do, if you're doing color, like um, selective outlines, you could color the outline so that this part was darker than this part. That's totally doable. Say we could use this brown color here and then keep these two pixels black and that would help differentiate the eyes from the rest of the outline. But I've chosen not to do that for this. Um, so you can see me, yeah, playing with darker pixels to give the impression of an eye. And when you zoom out, that's when it's most important because that's what the player is going to see. So let me see if I can pause it. So here, 
at this distance, you can, I mean, you can barely see it at all, but uh, at this distance, if you can see that the sort of impression where the eye will be, that may be enough to, to show this. Now, it's less of an issue with, say, the rat, because its nose is so long, you could just justify that the eye is being obscured by the snout. But for the ferret here, or the weasel, the squirrel, and maybe even to an extent the hedgehog, I didn't want them to look like they had just one eye. Uh, the flatter the face, the harder it is to get away with that. So that's why I'm experimenting with these pixels here. Somebody in chat was like, make him longer. So I made him a bit longer. Again, the white underbelly to help make the arms a little more distinct from the body. I think which uh, worked out quite well here. And just trying to get make sure the shape is right. If we look at this here, the pose is a little bit weak because the head, um, if we look at where the weight is of that head, it's quite forward relative to where the leg is planted. So it kind of looks like he's leaning over a little bit. And I wanted to straighten that out. And the way to do that is to plant the foot further over to the right. So that's what I'm doing here. Or at least if the foot, if you see the foot coming out, so this looks like the foot is facing down almost like its fist is pointed at the ground, you know, if we were to anthropomorphize it. But at, at the very least, having that little crease come in like this, at the very least, it makes it look like the chest is puffed out a little more and the foot here is planted, taking the weight of that a little bit more. Uh, and then I, I did a bit more work here, straightening out the chest to make it look a little bit less like the whole chest is leaning over and more just that it's the head that's protruding forward. These things are very, very minor, um, but I think overall that looks a little better than what it looked like a few pixels ago. You can see I'm sort of bringing a lot of it back this way uh, to try to then, yeah, count that balance out. This is interesting. Um, so the light here, was all the way down i pulled it back because i saw this idea of there being like a like a cylinder for the for the tail i wanted to make it look like this part here was like uh, the cross section like it was like the tail was thicker and none of this is receiving any light it's all coming down and then sort of like there's an angle here and all of this is yeah flatter i thought that might look kind of cool makes it look a little bit bushier so next a pig you can see I went instinctively for the pink, mostly because I wanted some more color diversity in the uh, cast of animals. Uh, but I settled on the flesh tones just because ultimately the pink is just too hot, too saturated. You know, we think of pigs as pink, but this, this flesh tone turned out to be really, really effective. And the pink is really only on the very extremities of the animal anyway. Most of the pig is, is quite flesh tones. And uh, it helps me out a little bit that this palette is a little more saturated, a little darker for those flesh tones. That ramp is a little darker. So this was easy to plot out. Nice big ears and curly tail. Make sure they're very clear. And pigs are quite simple in terms of their shapes. So there wasn't that much that I had to do here. I thought I'd do a little bit more on the tail to make it stand out. So you can see me here in a second after I make the head a little clearer. Oh, I like that. So this idea of keeping this back arm in shadow helps clearly define this chin. And this is similar to how I would do like a neck. If I have a portrait of a character and I wanted the neck to be darker, that would be a really clean way to define the jaw separate from the neck. And it works here as well. And uh, I thought the tail would look a little more interesting from a silhouette perspective if it was up rather than down, just to keep it sort of light and curly the way a pig, pig's tail is. And you can see that I'm, I'm experimenting with bringing it right back around to the body, but then it looks like it's sort of like a teacup handle. <laughs> this pixel right here, separating the tail from the body. See, if we join it up, it doesn't look quite right. Nice. So the next, was a raccoon. This was easily the hardest one. It took three times as long as any of the others. Uh, mostly because I think I just fell into a space where I was seeing a bear 
or I was getting I was getting shapes that reminded me of a bear cub and I couldn't make the distinction I couldn't figure out where the difference was uh, and it ended up being I think at the bottom of the face you know a raccoon is so unique in its shape so here I'm trying to capture all of the elements a raccoon's kind of interesting because it's got unlike a lot of the other animals it has not only the long fluffy tail it's got very dexterous hands and it's got a really unique face um, which is interesting because a lot of the other animals have one or two of those features but the raccoon is so complicated it's also really really difficult because it's it's basically monochrome it's black and white so making those eyes distinct from the face is yet another issue um, and I really struggled here with trying to figure out how do I make these eyes stick out a lot of this is just flicking back and forward looking at the reference at one point um, so much monsters another streamer came in and said why are you tabbing back and forth why don't you just put put the sprite on the left side and put the reference on the right so I took that feedback sometimes you just get caught I'm not sure I'm not sure what happened there he was being very kind. He's like, well, I didn't mean to push you. I said, no, no, you're right. I don't know why. So I think I'm getting stuck here. There's a, there's a specific thing here. I'm looking at these markings and I'm trying to track the white around the eyes. And I'm seeing the eyes as being like these black markings on the left side and the right side of the face. And I'm not really seeing the overall I'm not seeing this dark line that comes up through from the nose to the head, or at least if I am, I'm sort of flicking back and forth. But if you look at the other references, these little eyebrows that track all the way to the snout, this white little piece here, it's actually not there for a lot of these other raccoons. So in reality, the better way to think about this would be two eyebrows and then just a couple of pixels either side of the, of the nose, right? There's no need to try to create this continuity down from the eyebrows all the way to the snout because it's barely there even in this most extreme case I think that's what really threw me off so you can see me doing all white on the on the forehead and then trying to wear it away and not knowing you know where does this go yeah this took a long time I experimented with having the the eyes be white it's a rational choice because raccoons at night you know if you take a photo of them you'd see the reflective eyes but that makes them look quite antagonistic and i wanted them to be cute so i wasn't really sold on that you can see me here just basically doing a big do-over trying to get that pose a little closer to what i wanted from just a silhouette perspective and then adding the details a little more i also made the mistake here of now i'm in the territory of like a cat so i've created these um sort of cheeks that come out these whiskers and it's there you know that the the actual logic is there but they don't again they don't extend quite so far out those cheeks come from the eyebrows out not from the muzzle here because of the way this black marking around the eyes comes all the way down so this doesn't extend out to here which is what's wrong with this so again i kind of got misdirected and um ended up in a territory that was a bit closer to like a cat or like even like a dog like uh i'm not sure what what breed that looks like but it kind of reminds me of like um a cavalier i was really looking like a dog at this point and i think i stumble i'm stumbling into something here that's working around having the spots around the eyes be one band one black band right across horizontally right across here i think this is the right direction here we go third third tray already that's looking much better prematurely going for the outline because i know the black is going to be a big factor still not happy with the whiskers but we'll get there it's definitely got the shape body wise now some more attention on the whiskers it's only a couple of pixels it's really not a lot <laughs> gave up again <laughs> are we gonna get there whoop whoop okay so here it is I'm, I'm slowly working out that 
all of those whiskers have nothing to do with the snout. The whiskers come from the eyebrows. And now we're much closer. There we go. That pretty much seals it. The nose pointing down, so, so much better. So just to recap on that one, because this is kind of like a little mini episode almost of, of me getting stuck. I think what's really interesting about this process and watching it back like this, it shows how clearly a lot of progress has to do with having your attention be at the right level. I would, you could see, I would focus on the face. I'd be pushing pixels and I wasn't looking at the big picture of the face. And I'd make moves, make moves, make moves, get stuck, bail out, work on some other element or work on something more high level, like the whole silhouette, and then come back and re-look at the, at the reference. Sometimes you're just biased at the wrong, you're looking at the wrong parts. And that process, that, that issue can only be solved by stepping backwards and re-examining. Geez, I look very focused here. <laughs> okay, next animal and our last one. It's a turtle or a tortoise. Tortoise are land animals. Turtles are ocean. So it's interesting, this one. Much like the frog, there's such a temptation to do a more... What's the word? Mm, caricatured version, like an emoji turtle. It's interesting because our perception of what a turtle looks like is so much more driven by cultural sort of drawings of turtles than actual pictures of turtles. So they're simple animals, silhouette wise. And historically in culture, you know, we give them characteristics that we think make them stand out or identify as turtles. Because if we just were to, you know, draw them as they are at a smaller scale or you know say in an emoji it's not as interesting um, like their faces are much much smaller than the rest of their body it's there's a temptation to say give them a smiley face or something like that because it's just not that much going on so here i'm trying to create a bit of a distinction with the shell i'm, I'm trying to make the shell the feature piece here and i've given the bottom of the shell a highlight right above the uh, the lower section of the shell or the inner section and this contrast helps make it seem like the edge of the shell is the furthest forward part and this edge this rim here is when you highlight it it makes the lower part being darker more justified it creates more depth and then one step further adding that darker color above it creates a kind of crease Right? And this crease makes it look like there's sort of like a like an edge all the way around that's sticking out. And you don't really see it here on this turtle. It's like sort of a fake detail, but I think actually it's, it's really effective. And if I wasn't going for a style that was much simpler than this, you can see me starting to work back that highlight color because it's just too detailed at this point. If I was going for a style that was a little more detailed, I think that would be a really good addition. But I've worked it back here because I just, the other animals aren't quite as detailed. I'm happy with this already. It's so simple, but I thought I would just try giving it some color diversity. Um, you know, the turtles themselves aren't green, really. They're sort of like this tan color. But this is another instance where I think the social sort of historical depiction of what a turtle looks like being green just it makes more sense to keep it that color for the sake of the people playing the game because they'll recognize it as a turtle a little more clearly that way okay so I do some extra detailing here just to sort of keep them all consistent with each other and I think this is a really important step right at the end and it's a reason why I'm working on these animals in the same canvas it's so that I can actually compare them after the fact and just say, okay, which ones need a little bit more detail, which ones don't. Like if I look at them now, I think the frog could probably have a little more to it compared to the turtle. The pig seems still quite simplistic, although it looks good. Um, that raccoon is the most detailed. Uh, so I probably try to distill the face with even fewer shades, but I think the shape is right on it at least.
Overall, really happy with the work. This was um, about an hour and a half, I think. So to do so many sprites in such a short period of time uh, was very pleasing. So now I'm going to show you the context where these characters are going, which is my game Arrowbound. I've been working on a little bit of a story sort of introduction to the game that's also going to be part of the trailer and sort of the big next version for the game. Uh, and so uh, yeah, enjoy that and I'll see you in the next one. And so all of these characters are going to be taken away by these big boys. See, all the birds are like anthropomorphized and all of the other animals are like just critters. So like the, the merchant, this guy is like, you know, they wear clothes, they got, you know, books and stuff. You've got a sword and a belt. But the other critters are just like that. So you gotta, it's gotta be believable that like this guy could like straight up eat one of these guys. So I should be able to put like this character, for example, in here and it still works. Here in the game, you're like climbing up towers and stuff. And um, this guy's the merchant. You can talk to him, you can buy stuff. And these nests here, they're gonna be eagle nests and you can jump inside of them. And the critters are gonna be inside of these nests. And so just now we saved a deer. What that's gonna look like is you saved a fox or you saved a, you know, whatever. So the game's out right now, you can play it on Google Play, but it doesn't have any of that intro. So none of the like, none of the why exists in the game. You're just sort of jumping up towers, saving deer. But once that's in there, I hope the game will be, it'll have a little more of that story continuity and just like a little more structure. I think that's the only thing it's missing. And then I'll do a little story trailer featuring those images and stuff. Uh, and that'll be the game. Hey pal, thanks for watching. And thanks most especially to the patrons and Twitch subs who support this channel and my game dev project Insignia. To find out more, click the links in the description below. And uh, if you like this video, tell YouTube by clicking the like button and then YouTube will tell me and then I'll make more videos. That's nice.